Community Connections CPMS Local sounds, thoughts, passions, and success Celebrate local Your neighbor's got a story to tell Community Connections Happy Monday, Waterloo Region. It's the 21st of August, 2023. You're listening to CKMS Community Connections. My name is Bob Jonkman. In the studio today, we have CX Violet, who's going to be doing a live on-air in-studio performance. Uh, but we're going to listen to a pre-recorded track called Glimpse of Us that um, CX Violet recorded a little while ago. So let's listen to that first. She took the world off my shoulders If it was ever hard to move she turned the rain to a rainbow When I was living in the blue Why then if she is so perfect Do I still wish that it was you? Perfect don't mean that it's worth it So what can I do? Sometimes I look in her eyes And that's when I find a glimpse of us And I try to fall for her touch But I'm thinking of the way it was Said I'm fine, said I moved on I'm only passing time in her arms Hoping I find That's CX Violet on piano with a tune called Glimpse of Us. Welcome to the studio, CX Violet. Thank you for having me, Bob. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> We're having a technical difficulty or two. Yes. Um, prior to the show, I was going through all the things that could possibly go wrong because I was feeling great. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, we had a couple uh, ongoing email chat going yeah, and yeah. I was like, I really like this Bob guy. It seems like we'll get along <laughs> great. No, nothing could go wrong, right? And of course, um, my piano is a little dysfunctional. Yeah, yeah. Well, the piano seems to be making sounds. So um, it's, it's just the pedal that's not doing the trick. As the, a non-piano player, I have no idea how to use the pedal in the first place. 
so it wouldn't obstruct my playing of the piano enough you'd want to, to listen to that yeah um i think it's just going to be whatever i do play is going to be a very staccato okay. very choppy version All of right. what it's supposed to be <laughs> So what we were just listening to, uh, A Glimpse of Us, that's not a CX Violet tune. That's something um, that um, you covered for somebody else. Yeah, that's a, originally a Joji song. Mm -hmm. um, I heard it basically when it came out. I thought it was a really well-written song, mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to do my own kind of piano-y spin on it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very nice. It's uh, not quite what you normally play, though, is it? Um, generally speaking, no, although in recent history, I've started to move back to piano yeah. more. Okay. Um, so a lot of like my recorded tracks that you've probably heard are, you know, kind of in that indie alternative, yeah. even rock sort of vein. Synth um, rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But recently I've been moving more towards, um, a piano centric sound or even a more orchestral kind of, uh, cinematic type sound. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Is that just the development of CX Violet's uh, musical talent? Or is I, that... I, I think it's an evolution of my, really just what I enjoy hearing. Okay. Um, the music I create has always been based on what I'm feeling at that time. Um, and I think it controls me more than I control it. So uh -huh. um, if... If that's what my mind is calling for, is something more orchestral, that's yeah. just what I go with. I hear that from artists. You know, they say that whatever art that they're working on is is doing things to them. It's not that they're making the art. The art is uh, just coming out because the art is telling that. Like uh, novelists will say that their characters are talking to them and the characters are doing things that they never planned out. Yes. Uh, and I guess it's the same with music. The music comes out... Uh, sometimes unexpected it very much feels like it's unfolding before me um yeah. not like i'm you know i'm not piecing it together uh except for like the foundations of my skill set mm -hmm. i'll use that to bring to life whatever abstract idea i have in mind um but from there it really just it just is what it is it just becomes yeah. something so the fact that it's changed isn't a sellout you haven't uh gone corporate or anything like that yeah, I think my worst nightmare would be to change my music for other people. Um, ah, yeah, I think yeah. it will always be a means of just me expressing my artistic language. Yeah, yeah. And so when you started out making music, how long have you been doing this? Making music? Making music. Um, my whole life, pretty much. I, I grew up in not an entirely musical household, but um, mm -hmm. my dad always played music okay. um, so I grew up listening to it um, and it being a part of my life um, and then in high school I had an, an incredible mentor uh, Mr. Alonzo um, uh, who, shout outs to Mr. Alonzo yeah shout outs to Mr. Alonzo um, and he really kind of ignited my passion for music um, and helped me you know kind of take it to another level and take it more seriously mm -hmm. and then I ended up going to school to study um, classical music. Um, and then I left university with a bachelor in classical music and nowhere to oh, go. Really? <laughs> um, and started just making music that I wanted to make um, and something maybe a little more, a little more modern. Um, okay. So when you say bachelor of classical music, it really means stuff from Beethoven era. I yeah, think. yeah. I mean, I my focus was very much Romantic era stuff. Okay, a bit later um, than Beethoven, then. A little later than Beethoven, yeah. but um, yeah, I, st I studied it all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And do you still have a, an opportunity to play any of that? Um, here and there, I would say not very much anymore. Um, but I think it influences. Interestingly, I think it influences a lot of what I'm doing now. Okay. Um, so a lot of the compositions that I'm making now are a lot more kind of inspired by Rachman and Av, um, okay. and and some of those romantic composers. Yeah. Um, whereas before it was not so much that. So it, it took a gap of five years or whatever, and now it's kind of influencing me again. Okay. I guess things come and go as the muse strikes you. Yeah. Apparently. I never thought about that <laughs> until just now, but <laughs> it seems that way. That's great. That's great. And now that you're switching back to the piano, is it those uh, piano composers from the Romantic era that you're channeling? I think a little bit. I don't want to say um, 
I don't want people to expect, you know, some romantic <laughs> era prelude. Like, uh, yeah. I, it's nothing like that. Um, but I, I think there are elements of that. A lot of um, kind of the chord structures that I gravitate towards are kind of inspired by that time. Okay. Um, but I, I wouldn't think of it, I wouldn't say it's not too deeply inspired okay. by that, but there's hints of it. Okay. Well, it's much in the way of pop song vocal music back in those days either. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but most of what I've heard from your recordings is what I'd call synth pop rock. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, I, I would say a lot of my, at least previous releases up to, up to now, have, mm -hmm. have been in that vein. And I think some of that will continue to exist for me, but... Okay. Because yeah, I kind of like that. Uh, yes. not, I have nothing against the romantic era music either, but uh, I, I'm a, a synth aficionado. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, You've got uh, quite the synth there in front of you. Yeah, I mean, right now I'm a little mad at it, but um, <laughs> uh, for any of the gearheads out there, I'm playing a Korg SV-1. Um, and it's, a, it's, it's done me well um, for the last five years or so. Oh, okay. And today is the first day that we okay. have a little bit of trouble with it. Yeah, it's probably something really minor that will fix itself when you get back home again. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, currently, it's not uh, making sound. So not making any sound at all? None. Oh, okay. oh, well, that's because I haven't got you turned on yet. Hang on a second. Let's have a listen to that now. Let's see. There we go. I'm hearing something. Good. And the pedal is magically working. <laughs> well, let's take advantage of that. Have you got something to play for us? Uh, yes, let's do it as quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, CX Pilot um, playing. Uh, so I'm going to do, I, I actually composed an introduction piece. Oh. Um, and it's a bit of a weird one. It's in an odd time signature. But uh, we're going to do that intro. And then if it works for you, uh, it will transition into an acoustic version of Hacker Boy. Ah, um, okay. Which is a more synth poppy song usually. Yes, yes, but yes. we're doing the piano version yeah. today. All right, CX Violet live on CKMS Community Connections.
run away Hacker boy You're the only thing that's real CX Violet in the studio, CKMS Community Connections. That's different from the recording that I'm familiar with. Yeah, I yeah. wanted to throw you for a loop. <laughs> <laughs> you sure did. Very nice, though. And you've got quite the vocal range there. Holy mackerel. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, the, uh, the falsetto was a little freaky this morning. Um, <laughs> my voice is feeling very deep, so I feel like yeah. the low sections felt great. Uh -huh. The high sections, a little freaky, okay. but we got through it. I heard some high uh, notes in uh, A Glimpse of Me as well. Yes. Uh, which yeah, also yeah. struck me by surprise when I first heard it. Yeah. So. I'm working on that falsetto. Cool. I, it'll get there. Okay. It'll get there. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Is that something you've had training for, vocal training? Um, I took a few lessons okay. uh, with a wonderful man named Chad. Mm -hmm. um, I think he teaches at, I'll have to ask my, uh, my friends over here. Okay. Western. Laurier. <laughs> Western and Laurier. Western uh, and Laurier. He teaches at both. Um, and he got, he, he got me started. Um, and then um, kind of gave me the the confidence and inspiration to to actually put my voice out there into the world. Okay. Um, and then I stopped taking lessons with him because I'm I just don't do well with instruction uh, and um, started kind of going on my own journey from there. But he definitely set me on the right track. Um, and from there, I've been kind of trying to craft my own voice. Um, right. What kind of things can a vocal coach teach you? I mean, you've either got the pipes or you don't. You know, I think I think I used to believe that, and I don't so much believe that anymore. Really? Um, I think everyone has a unique voice, and not everyone is going to be Ariana Grande, um, but I do think everyone can find their voice um, and sharpen and shape whatever voice that is. So, like, for me, for example, I don't have a great belting tone or anything, um, but A, I can work towards that, uh, and B, more mm -hmm. importantly, actually, is uh, what voice I do have, uh, utilizing it to shape the sound of the, the art I want to create. I think okay. I can do that. I think anyone can do that. There's hope for me yet. There is hope for you. You just got to <laughs> find your sound. <laughs> I'm not sure that I can actually carry a tune. I can just... Well, you have a great radio voice at the very least. Ah, so. well, thank you for There's that. There's something you can use those pipes for. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay, so Hacker Boy, that's, um, that's the first song that I heard from you. I think uh, you contacted me on Instagram. Yes. And uh, either gave me a link to that or uh, we got communicating that way. Uh, where did that come from? How, how did you arrive at that? I mean, you're talking about things like mainframes and uh, it's all very non-romantic, if you ask me. Yes, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, the sort of the CX Violet overview mm -hmm. is I wanted a place to outlet my creativity mm -hmm. um, and 
I had been putting music out prior to CX Violet as myself, which mm -hmm. is my own name. Um, and I enjoyed doing that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I enjoyed doing that, uh, but I felt there was, it, 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 it felt strange to me um, for people to be contacting me who I'd never met. Um, and they're contacting me as, hey, you're, you're Caleb, you're a friend of mine. Um, there was a weird right. dichotomy there of me not knowing this person and this person feeling some sort of parasocial connection to me. Right. Um, and it started to feel a little unsafe for me creatively. Not uh, in a dramatic way, just in a way that I noticed it influenced how I was making music. Um, so I created CX Violet as this kind of alternative character, but more importantly, this alternative universe um, to be able to express myself free of any restraints, free of any like feelings of, you know, how will this person right. I know react to this or how I just wanted it to be surely I'm in my studio attic. I'm just creating and what comes out comes out. Okay. Um, and so I created this universe, um, and it's mostly character based. Um, and I have all these ideas of different characters and ways that these characters will at some point intertwine okay. with each other. Um, they all have their own different musical styles. They all have, uh, within, within the bounds of what I'm actually capable oh, of yeah. doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I do think I have a pretty wide spectrum of musical influences. Um, so yeah, I, I do think they all have pretty unique okay. sounds. Um, and did you, do this uh, out of a sense of personal safety or just as a, a, a separation between your personal life and your musical life? Uh, I would say creative safety. Um, like I said, I feel very much like uh, the art I put out. Uh, I feel like it already exists and I'm kind of like reaching out into the universe and grabbing it. Um, mm -hmm. Not to get to yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I do feel uh, like a weird sense of responsibility to find that art, whatever it is in the universe and make it as clearly my voice and my interpretation of that as possible. Um, and when other people start to influence that and start to kind of infiltrate that creative space, um, it changes. And sometimes uh, in a collaborative spirit, it changes for the better. And I think that's great. Um, but with CX Violet, especially the idea is very much for me just to outlet my own creative spirit. Okay. Is there any uh, attempt by CX Violet to create the music that his fans, their fans want to hear? I think so, but I also have a lot of trust in my fan base um, to acknowledge that I'm just a creative person and sometimes okay. it's going to hit and sometimes it's going to miss, um, okay. but there will always be more music to come. Okay. Do you have other uh, musical personas that you're actively promoting at this point, or is it CX Violet is, is the sole... CX Violet all the way. Violet, um, I also yeah. have in, in the collaborative spirit, mm -hmm. I, I work with a group called The New People. Um, yes. And that is much more of a community oriented or at least collaborative collaboration oriented project. Um, and I'm extremely happy with how that's been coming along. Okay. Um, and after the Hacker Boy EP, which is coming out September 28th, no. um, there's a little <laughs> date drop for you. Um, after that release, uh, we're going to be releasing an album CX Violet and the New People collaborative album. Um, and I will say I'm very, very happy with how that turned out. Okay. I've only got the one track, Oh My, with CX Violet and the New People. Yeah, so it's, uh, a, it's a new evolution from there. I'll, I'll send you stuff, thing. though. Oh, that, that'd be good, because I you know, love having the new stuff, especially the new local stuff. Yes, 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 coming yes. Into the station. Well, actually, it goes for anybody. If uh, you're listening and you're a musician uh, and you want to get your music on the radio, send it to office at radiowaterloo.ca. And uh, if you're from the area, put KW Con in the subject line so that we know that it's uh, Kitchener Waterloo content. If you're out of the area but still Canadian, put CanCon in the subject line so we can find your stuff easily. Yeah, just love promoting the local musicians. Have you been playing a lot locally? Um, I went through a period of playing a lot of local shows, and now I'm in a period of taking some time just to okay. myself, just to hone my composition. Um, and so this is the creative period. This is the creative period. I, I think my whole life is just three months at a time, just okay. sections of, of, uh, of things that I'm, I'm feeling at that time. Right now, I'm in a very creative more introverted headspace, maybe. Okay. Um, so you got me out yeah. of my comfort zone today, and I appreciate <laughs> that. But yeah, generally speaking, I'm just in a creative mindset. Um, and then in a, probably a month or two, I'll be back to performing. 
Okay, when you perform, um, where, what venues want to listen to CX Violet? Um, oh, that's a great question. If you have any recommendations, oh. let me know. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll take what I can get. Okay. I'm, I'm not picky about that sort of thing. I also really like the idea of taking um, spaces that wouldn't normally host music and turning it into ah. a creative space. Yeah. Um, that's really cool to me. Um, but right now, no leads. No um, leads. Okay. So, what's your contact information? How can people get a hold of you if they want to uh, listen to your music live in their own venue? Yeah, I think uh, the sort of my landing page right now, or at least the easiest way to find me, would be through Instagram. Um, so it's underscore cx at, at underscore cx violet on Instagram. On Instagram, um, but. I would, I would start there. I also have a YouTube channel just under CX Violet as well. Okay. Um, and the goal over the next couple of months is to uh, start up a Bandcamp page. Or I already have one, but it's not too polished. Um, so I really like the okay. idea of Bandcamp. I like what they're doing. Yeah. Um, so I want to get deeper into that. And then, of course, you can find me on all the normal streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Music. Okay. And it's, it's all under CX Violet. Okay, but the way to get a hold of you right now is through Instagram. Through Instagram, yes. Okay, I have yeah. all those links to CX Violet's uh, contact information on our show notes, radiowaterloo.ca slash ccc. So hopefully we'll have that up by the end of the week. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, and if anyone has leads on like a cool venue, you can uh, yeah. always DM me on Instagram. I think there must be some promoters in the Kitchener Waterloo area that uh, would just be itching to get a hold of your music. I hope so. The um, It's funny, my first ever show in Kitchener that I hosted myself um, was at AOK, which is a, a video game bar in oh, downtown okay. Kitchener. I don't know it. Um, it. It's a really cool bar. It has old school video games. Um, like really? pinball machines, that kind of stuff. Uh, okay, um, I would like that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I don't think they, I don't think it was always used to host music, um, but we hosted a show there. And prior to the show, I did a bunch of outreach, just asking for help because mm -hmm. I don't really know how to. This is my first time hosting a show. I don't really know yeah, how. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I didn't get too much help beforehand, but afterwards, a lot of people seemed very interested. Okay. Um, so hopefully this time, we can figure something out beforehand. And right. uh, yeah. you're performing solo, uh, either solo or I'll be performing with the new people. Okay. Um, it will depend show to show. Okay. And is, is that you playing and then the new people playing or is that um, like the band? More so the band. More We're so still figuring band. it out. Okay. I mean, there's there's still a lot of give and take in terms yeah. of like, OK, what do we want to do? what do especially me? I'm so picky. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what do I want to do all by myself and what do I want to do right. with the team? And um, we're constantly in conversation, figuring those yeah. things out and working together. Yeah. Did the new people exist before you met them or is it? Uh, yeah, a the new, new people, the new people existed okay. um, in in a way uh, okay. before I met them. And then um, it's changed drastically over the last couple of years. Uh, personnel churn, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, personnel, I think just when you get two young guys trying to start a label publishing house okay. band together, um, they're bound to change over time. And as they change, so does... Right. Right. I have to get the new people into the studio at some point, too. I think that would be a great idea. Yeah. 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 Got something else? Uh, yes, I have a song um, on guitar, actually. Okay. Um, Get so. the roadies to come up and hand off the guitar. <laughs> Got uh, Stevie and Naomi in the studio with us today as well. Or, um, helping out, moving equipment, getting patch boards. And the guitar for, um, for CX Violet. What do I call you, by the way? Do I call you CX? Do I call you Mr. Violet? Uh, please no, Mr. That's my <laughs> father's name. Uh, but just call me Violet. Just um, Violet. Yeah, okay. I, I, I tend to go by Violet in any of the music sphere connections I make. Okay. So what are you going um, to uh, do on the guitar for us? Uh, so I wrote this song um, a couple weeks ago, um, and I just really like it. Um, so I don't have a name for it yet or oh, anything. An unnamed. Um, an untitled song, but it will be released uh, eventually. Um, and I I'm hoping if I can record it right, I'm hoping it will sound pretty similar to what you're going to hear today. Okay. Violet in the studio on guitar. And let me just make sure my levels aren't a mess here. How's that sound? Uh, 
We'll see how it comes out. <laughs> All right, sounds good to me. See how. I've got this drive in me And I have yet to know If it brings out the best in me Or if it burns down my soul See, I've got this drive in me And I can't understand when it takes its toll, will it take me to? Will it do to me what it did to you? As a young man. See, I've got a spirit as does the earth. And I don't know if I can let it go. Or even hold it first See I, I Got this strength It protects me from danger But separates the stranger From my kind See, I, see, I, see, I, see, I, see, I've got this worm in me. Yeah, I've got Kurt Songbird in me. Not the one that goes pooty wee But the one that comes from the stomach Hungry as heroin, comfy as needles See, I've got a spirit As does the earth And it knows love, it knows love, it knows love And it knows her It knows her Cause it's been her And it's learned How to hurt And it hurts And it hurts, and it hurts, and it hurts, but it knows love. CX Violet live in the CKMS studio with an as yet untitled new song. Very nice. Is there some autobiographical aspect to that? Uh, yeah, I would say all my songs in general carry little fingerprints of myself. Okay. Um, in the case of that song, um, it's still fresh, so I don't have a good pitch for it or anything. Okay. But yeah, it definitely is like. Um, I think I have a little bit of a, a hustler spirit in me sometimes, okay. um, and it's kind of about that and kind of reaching a little bit, but trying to figure out A, where that comes from, and B, how that translates into my life okay. and what that means for me. Is that true for all the songs you compose? In different ways, yes. Yeah, yeah so even Hacker Boy is like, in a way, a reflection of myself. Really? Um, okay. 
That's why I like the idea of writing about characters because they yeah. can all carry little pieces of me, but they can also have their own right, make their a, own pieces and their own adventures. As different as you want to be. Yeah. 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 Some really good guitar technique. On, uh, on the song. <laughs> Are you joking? No, I'm not. I mean, it's uh, the, the opening, the you know, the, and and the closing as well. Yeah. You know, not sure what you call that, but you're getting the overtones on the strings. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. Like that. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. I have no idea what I'm doing on guitar. <laughs> um, uh, I, I think in general I'm pretty self-taught across the board. Uh, guitar, I literally have no idea what I'm doing, um, but just okay. following what sounds good out. to me. Yeah, it yeah. <laughs> I can't manage anything with strings, you know. It's, yeah, uh, the string stuff is hard. I also started rock climbing recently, um, oh. so my forearms are just killing. Oh, um, which makes the bar chord stuff very hard. But yeah, yeah. Different muscle groups for rock climbing because I figured you know it's all in the fingers and the forearms. Fingers and forearms, yeah. 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 Timing. Oh, cool. It's, I've only gone twice, but yeah. So. Okay, so <laughs> you're still building up then. Yes, yes. Okay. And I'm certainly feeling it today. Yeah, as a yeah. You uh, climb in the gym or have you been out uh, in the wild? Uh, just in the gym. I've tried rock climbing in the wild once, but it was a uh, terrifying experience. <laughs> <laughs> I probably won't do that again. No? Okay, so this is strictly... Um, strictly indoors strictly with pads indoors. at the bottom. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very good. Harnesses? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. So when you're writing, uh, you wrote that. Um, did it come to you in one piece, or did you have lyrics first or music first? Um, in this case, uh, it kind of just came all in one sitting. Oh. Uh, it, I, I don't always write that way. In fact, I rarely write that way. But with this song, it came very naturally, and it came within 15, 20 minutes. Wow. And I just really liked it right off the bat, and I was like, turn on my phone camera, record that, and we're just keeping mm -hmm. it as is. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. I've been asking people that, you know, uh, do they do the lyrics first and put music to it or the other way around? I think that's such a fascinating conversation. Yeah. And everybody's different. Yeah. It's, uh, it's about half and half, I think. And in some cases, like you, it all happens at the same time. Yeah. 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 I think, I, I don't think there's a right or wrong. I think everyone just oh, has their... No. Yes. Just, I'm curious, you know, for, for yeah. technique. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love hearing what other people's approach is too. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't even have a solid approach yet. It's no? it's always something oh, different, song to song. That's probably good because you want to get more variety, more creativity coming yeah. out that way. Yeah, I also, um, I believe that it's important to try things you're not comfortable with, um, especially mm. with me. Like, I, I'm so familiar with music language um, that pushing myself outside of the norm, trying to play guitar, um, doing things I'm not so comfortable with uh, really helps me find a new kind of artistic lens, and I really like that. Um, okay. So that's an important. Not part afraid of of, of, of crafting a dud that isn't going to go over with the fans. Um. I mean, I've done that so many times now and <laughs> failed to put out so much music that at this point my ethos is more just do as much as I can. Right. And I think I have. Not to sound braggadocious, but I think I have a decent. I have a good ear for what I like. And okay. I just trust that my fans will generally like okay. kind of the same spirit. You're writing for CX like. Violet and the fans follow along. Yeah, okay. hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing, so we'll see if that actually works. But yeah. and that's where my yeah. head is at now. And you get those venues and you're back into the performing stage again. We'll, yeah. Uh, we'll see how the fans uh, go to that. But, you know. Yeah, especially for the live sets, though. I do have a couple staples that I go to and tend to be yeah. crowd pleasers. So. Is it all CX Violet music or do you go do covers? It's mostly original. I yeah. rarely, rarely do covers, but... Um, okay. That's so cool, because... I don't know. There, there's some bands that do mostly covers, and some of them are afraid to actually go and, and perform their own music because, you know, it's not well-known. Yes. I feel the other way. I'm scared to do covers, because especially... If I'm going to do a cover, it's going to be a song I really like, mm -hmm. probably from an artist I really respect. And then if I'm doing a cover of that, I don't want to screw it up, you know? Right, right. I want to do them... I want to do this song justice. So. And I guess there's, there's no worry about royalties when you're performing your own music. If you're covering somebody else, then there's all the, uh, the payments, you know, the... Yeah, uh, yeah, and I don't understand any of that rights. stuff. No. So. No. <laughs> the whole, like, I, we just signed up for SoCan, and okay. we're trying to figure it out, um, but I... Yeah, it's, it's a mess. That's not in my wheelhouse. I can tell you that's a mess. You need you need an agent, you need a manager, you need somebody to take care of that kind of stuff for yeah. you. Yeah, underscore CX Pilot if anyone <laughs> wants to manage or be an agent. Uh, yeah. I'm sure there's people out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, 
met so many uh, bands and, and musicians now. You know, it uh, might be a nice sideline for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, you, you could you could make for a great agent at uh, this point, probably. Uh, I don't know anybody in the venues though, so you know, mm. it's, uh, you could all come into the radio station and perform on the air, but not much money in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's not much money in any of it anymore. No. Is this um, a full-time gig for you? or It is a full-time gig. Um, I am very much sitting in the broke artist trope at the moment. Oh. Um, but I'm hanging in. Okay. As long as I'm paying rent and able to buy food, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Good. Yeah. 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 And you said you had your own studio to, to do this in, so you're yeah. not um, going out of pocket for... Uh, recording studios and the like yeah i mean we tried recording at another studio um and we got the recordings back and we realized we could record just as well without any time constraints right. uh, in our, our own studio studio time has to be expensive very expensive um we got a little bit of grant funding from the canadian arts council which oh, helps yes. offset those yes. expenses um but even still we we came out of there like we should just do this at home it's just as high quality and we don't have to feel like the pressure of right. an hourly rate or whatever it is yeah exactly when uh, you've put out your other music the recorded music uh, did you have a producer going over the stuff after you had recorded it or is it just all no I, I perform record produce everything okay. uh, myself with uh my dear friend and artist partner stevie okay um He's the one yeah, behind yeah. you helping me out today. Yeah. Um, so he'll, he'll usually, and him and, and Naomi, for what it's worth, will okay. usually kind of scrub over what I've done and, you know, give me a little bit of guidance. I've been learning about producers and how deeply they get involved in sometimes the composition and, and creativity of the music that's being played. You know, they'll accompany on uh, various musical instruments. They'll provide input into uh, the music, into the lyrics. And I can imagine that somebody who's written something and are going into the recording studio, having it completely changed around by a producer to you know, be more acceptable to the, the paying public. Yeah. I don't know if that's selling out exactly or just um, crafting a, a different way of crafting your art. Yeah, yeah. I think it's an interesting conversation. I think when I'm producing, especially for other artists, I like to, I like to start at the ground floor with them, um, get an understanding of what they want, um, get an understanding of not just like from a song structure standpoint, but on a much broader scale, like aesthetically, what are you going for? Um, what's, what are you, what message are you trying to put out to the world? What is your unique voice in the world? Um, and getting to the heart of those questions is the root of all my production. And then from there, we figure out the technicals. Oh, what instrument do you want here? What kind of sound palette do you want here? That kind of stuff. Oh, goodness, that's an that would apply to just about anything, you know, to, to writing, to, uh, to painting, to sculpture. I think so, yeah. yeah. I do think it applies to any, especially, uh, my field is arts. I don't know much outside of <laughs> art, but uh, it, apply, it applies pretty well across the board for any type of art. Yeah, well, that, that's good, because, you know, marketable skills, are, or at least transferable skills, even if they're not so marketable. Yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> exactly. You got something else? Um, I don't, but I can certainly improvise something. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, right. whatever you want. Do you want, uh, I'll do it on piano cause okay. it's more comfortable. Piano though. is good. Do you have a favorite chord or a key or anything? I am a musical ignoramus. That's so, okay. Um, everything... Letter from A to G. Okay. Uh, let's pick G. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, and what, do you want it to be you... sad, happy? What well, you happy is good. Happy? Uh, sure. uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, we're getting to the end of summer, so let's get the happy and An all end we can. of summer, hap okay, yeah, I can do that. Um, My goodness. I'll try something for you. Live on the air, um, yeah, unscripted. Ho yeah, hopefully I don't. Uh, <laughs> hopefully this doesn't flop now, but I think it'll be okay. All right, CX Violet on CKMS Community Connections.
can't tell me you haven't practiced that before you came in here. Uh, I know I know a couple chord progressions just off the top of my head, yeah. and then I just try and shape a song around it. And I wanted to do something uplifting, but also kind of reminiscent of a summer past. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of how it felt to me. It was wonderful. Uh, see, I'm going to go home and think, oh, I really, that was a boring melody. <laughs> I'm going to pick apart all the problems with it. Um, and is this going to become a produced something in, in the future? Is this the start of something big? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. But you never know. Yeah. So you must have had piano training at, at some point. Uh, I took lessons when I was like eight. Um, oh. And I learned a lot about myself in the last couple <laughs> of years. Uh, one thing I've learned is that I'm neurodivergent in a few different ways. Uh -huh. Um, and how that translates when you're an eight-year-old boy taking piano lessons and very introverted is you just don't talk. Uh, and so I was in the piano lessons and I was sitting there and I was pretty good, but I just didn't speak to the teacher. Right. Um, I didn't speak in the class at all. Um, and I just hated it. And so my parents took me out of the piano classes, but I held on to the books. And then I taught myself the books just at the piano at our home okay. and learned that way. And then from there, it just expanded into what I do now. Right. Uh, it's very successful, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. What's coming up in the future? What's um, you're doing the the creative three months at the moment? Yeah. Um, the Hacker Boy EP, which is the whole, I think there's seven songs on the oh, EP, um, and it's all kind of about Hacker Boy and his friend Adelaide uh, ah. trying to escape this dystopian city that they live within. A concept album. Uh, it's all concept for me. It's yeah. all concept. But um, so the EP is coming out about those characters and kind of the start of their journey. Um, and hopefully that serves as kind of a precursor to the much broader CX Violet universe. That's the okay. idea. So that's coming out late September. And then uh, the New People album is coming out hopefully a month after, but we'll see. Okay. So you must be working on both of those concurrently. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm always, there's always stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, Aside from those two projects, like I, I was telling my friend Naomi the other day, I have about 40 songs that I'm just kind of sitting on right now. Um, and so, all percolating in your mind yeah. to, to come out in some tangible form. Yeah, exactly. Um, so there are just, I think my goal, and we'll see how it goes, and I don't want to make any promises I can't keep, but my goal is just to constantly be putting out music until I don't have any more to put out. Um, and right now, it feels like I just have this infinite reservoir of music that I just need to exist in the world, um, and it doesn't yet. Uh, and so I just feel a lot of motivation to record it and get it out there. I can't see you running out. Uh, every time you create something, it's the building block for something beyond that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. And then once the albums are out, so September for the Hacker Boy EP, and then early October for the new people? Something like that. I don't know exactly what the dates are on the new people okay. stuff, and I'm probably not the one to say, but um, and then the late, late fall, I think okay. we'll try and have it out. Okay, and then the Grand World Tour to promote the albums? And then the Grand World Tour. I made like a, <laughs> I made like a, a three-year plan for myself that okay. ends at the end of the three years. It's like a world tour. Um, we'll see if that comes to okay. fruition. But Have you been playing outside the area? Outside what's sorry? Outside of Kitchener Waterloo, have you been playing, uh, you know, Toronto, um, uh, other places? A little bit. Again, yeah. like I'm not the biggest performer, um, but we did a little bit of a tour last year. Um, it was very, okay. a very sketchy version of a tour. We would like, uh, like volunteer at festivals and then just get small stages at those festivals. Okay. But just finding whatever we can. Um, and then just in my history, I've performed at some bigger venues with other bands or in the classical sphere. I've done some larger venues and okay. shows. But Is that something that you would pursue if um, the, the regular touring and, and uh, playing dried up? I Go think back to doing classical? No, um, but I do uh, think that I would use a little bit more of that and do film scoring or video game scoring. Oh. Um, I think regardless of the touring stuff, that's something I also want to do in my life. Um, so I how, think... How do you get a foothold in that? I mean, I don't know. who do you have to know? Listen, if you have any names. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm not sure. We're, we're figuring it out. Um, yeah. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, some of the stuff that you've... Like the stuff you just played there, for example, uh, would make great 
film music. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I, I would love to. It, it'd be a dream of mine. It's always been a dream of mine um, to do film scoring. And yeah. now more recently, video game scoring seems like okay. a future extension of that. Um, so I think it would be really cool, but all in due time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, take your time being creative first. Yeah. Because uh, if, if creativity isn't there, then, you know, then, then, you're, then you're selling out. I, I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, coming up in September, October, you'll be uh, looking for venues to play in. And when you go out there, what kind of venues are there? Do you perform in restaurants, you know, noisy atmospheres where you're just sitting in a corner and you're the background music? Is that the kind of stuff that you do? Um, generally, no. Uh, I will do those gigs for the pay, um, especially like, you know, the bar piano guy. Yeah. I can be that guy. Yeah. Um, but for, for live performances, I really do like, like, kind of like I mentioned, turning non-musical venues or non-traditionally musical venues into a concert space and creating right. a moment, even if it's a small show with 20 people. But those are for the shows you're producing yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I that's think that's right. mostly what we're gravitating towards. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And do you have a, a set place to, that you go to for performing at? Is there a, a favorite venue? Not yet. Um, we had a lot of fun at the AOK bar, but okay. I, th I think we want to try just a bunch of different things. Okay. I also have this crazy idea to turn the attic studio space into a concert space. It would mm. only fit 10 people, yeah. but having a super intimate kind of 10 person show in the space that I create the music in, I think we could pull something really cool out of that. Okay. There's um, an organization that does things like that. They, uh, they do the hidden, the secret concerts. Uh, so they find uh, a place, somebody who can host uh, a small uh, concert, you know, 10 people perhaps is, is just perfect. And then they don't advertise it. They just send it out to their mailing list of, um, of people who've expressed an interest. And at the very last minute, they announce the venue. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, people go there. Uh, you had uh, Natalia Valencia in the studio a few weeks back, and she does those on occasion and really enjoys them. Yeah, those seem very cool. I've I've heard of those through the grapevine. I've yeah. never obviously I've never done one myself, but those do seem very cool to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once you've got um, the concerts going again, do you uh, plan on collaborating with others? You know, you've, you've got the new people now, but uh, if there's a, a lineup of you know three or four musicians at uh, a concert that you're not producing yourself, um, how does that sit with you? Do you I would love to. Yeah. Um, I think that is kind of the goal, especially with the new people. One of one of the kind of key points to the new people is helping people find their voice, um, right. is being collaborative, is being a part of the community. Those are all yeah. staples of the new people. Yeah. Um, so having a collaborative concert, having a set with four or five other artists, um, I, w I would love to do that. Okay. Um, and we've done versions of that in the past. I think it's just about expanding that and um, yeah. yeah, doing it in a way that actually brings people out and, you know, uh, plays like I, I want to play more to the fan base that we already right. have. Right. Now, you did something like that recently. You were in uh, the Jillian video with Eye of the Mountain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, how'd you get a hold of exactly. that? Huh? How did they um, get a hold of you? Oh, they just uh, they sent me probably the sweetest worded email i've ever received <laughs> um it completely stroked my ego uh and there was no way i could say no after that yeah um it it, it was a very genuine message um and i think the idea for that video is to get people who are maybe a little bit unique um mm -hmm. and have a unique sense of self and a unique yeah. voice themselves um and I happened to be one of the people they reached out to. Um, and yeah, I spent the afternoon with a bunch of lovely folks and we made that video. And the video, I'm I'm gonna level with you, Bob. When we were shooting the video, uh -huh. I thought it was gonna be garbage. Um, the the setting of where we were shooting yeah. and kind of the- This is on Gockle Street, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Gockle walkway. I just, I just couldn't imagine how it could turn out well. Um, but sure enough, I see the video a couple weeks later mm -hmm. and it's, absolutely spectacular it is a fun video it, it, yeah. it blew my expectations way out of the water yeah um and the guy who shot it bo um bo urbina uh, shout out to him too because i i think i've worked with him he's a great guy to work with mm -hmm. but i am so impressed with what he got like given the resources what he got out of it was so impressive to me yeah, it's all in the post-production i guess i guess i don't know we've got either mountain coming in next week so 
I'll be getting their perspective on the video then. Yeah, I'll be tuning in for that one. All right, cool, yeah. cool, cool. Yeah. When, um, when you're performing and the audience isn't gelling with you, how do you deal with that? Um, I don't think I've really had that experience yet. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, can, I can always adapt. The, the type of audience that usually wouldn't gel with me is the drunkard bar uh -huh. sort of setting. But then I have a few tricks up my sleeve. Um, and I can always do the, you know, say a word and I'll make a song based on that word. Give me uh, a key and I can make a song in that key. Do you want it happy? Do you want it sad? Um, I think I have enough, insp uh, uh, enough, what's the word? You have enough tools in your toolbox to be able to. Yeah, I can always pull something out. And yeah. if one thing doesn't work, I can pull a new thing out until it, uh, until it does jive. Okay. I guess it doesn't happen so much when you're uh, crafting your own concerts you know if you're producing your own yeah that's uh, the other thing usually yeah. like our fan base is pretty well curated to what we're doing right um you know, but yeah you're not going to get um people just coming in off the streets to see you they've they've made an effort to come out exactly exactly yeah. exactly yeah. Yeah. any idea how wide your fan base ranges have you received email from timbuktu um geographically it's pretty incredible um i think a large portion of my fan base exists in uh Europe uh, and South America um, but I've re I at this point I think I've received messages from just about any country you can name okay I think we've just about reached the end of our hour all right it was a I had a great time talking to you yeah, yeah. It's, this is this is fun I love it when people come in and, and you know give me a, a concert a, an on-air performance yeah yeah okay quick recap how can people get a hold of you uh, so you can find me on Instagram, underscore CXViolet, uh, or on any streaming platform as just CXViolet. And look for the new albums coming out, Hacker Boy EP in September, and uh, CXViolet on the new people about a month after that. You've been yeah. listening to CKMS Community Connections on CKMS FM. My name is Bob Jonkman. CKMS Community Connections is produced by Radio Waterloo, sponsored by Radio Waterloo. Executive producer is Jennifer Strong. Uh, associate producer is Jeff Steger. CKMS Community Connections airs every Monday at 11 o'clock and Fridays, alternate Fridays, at 3 p.m. Talk to you then. Mm -hmm.